zone under residential use under MPKJ. Next, this is our particular of title. Lot number is lot number 2020. Title number is GRM 47554. Mukis semenyi hulu Kenya in perpetuity. Category of land use is building. Annual rate is 2628 ringgit Malaysia. Registered land area is 4.04 hectare. Restriction in Interest is bangun yang kediaman. Income basis is nil. Next, this is our title search. Next. This is our title search. Next. This is our site plan. Our land number is 2020. Next. This is our current site view. Next. Next. Yeah, this is accessibility maps. Uh, as you can see on the screen right now, our purpose site is can access using the main road, which is Jalan Bangi Lama, Semenye Central Semenye Jalan Semenye Kajang. And it can access to the highway, which is Kajang Sit Highway and Cheras Kajang Expressway. Next. This is uh, the surrounding map of the purple site. Uh, the purple site is near to Raja, Raja Muda Musa Mosque, which is in 850 meter. And it's near to the School, Sekolah Menengah Kebahasa Engku Husin and Sekolah Jenis Kebahasaan Cina, Sing Ming Semenye, about 1.8 km and 2.1 km. And is the purple site also near to the Semenye Central, which is the bus station, 1.5 km and Semenye Health Clinic, about 2.1 km. Next, I will pass to City One with that. Thank you, Izwani. So I will proceed with market study. Next. First and foremost, the market study for residential property in Selangor. The transaction value and the volume decreases. The two to three terrace house transaction dominates the residential property market. New launch soften and reduce in overhang and unsold situation. The total supply of residential unit in Hululanga is 91,000 and the average price per unit for our purpose development is 500,000 ringgit for terrace and 300,000 for apartment. Next. For the commercial property in Selangor. For the commercial property in Selangor. The transaction volume and value decrease. The single story shop transaction dominates the market. The overhang unit reduced. The supply of shop unit in Hululanga is 814 units. The average price of shop house in Hululanga is 300,000 for single story and 800,000 for double story shop. Next. Population age structure in Selangor. The population age of 15 and 64 years old dominates the demography in Selangor, which we think is good as this population age is consists of young workers and adults, which is our main target market. Next. For the household income, Hululangat household income median is 8,300 per month, higher than the median household income of Selangor, which made Hululanga as one of our strategic development sites as Hululanga people might afford to purchase property offered by our development. Next. For the demand and supply analysis, the total supply of residential units in Selangor, which made up of current existing stock, plan supply and incoming supply, are 1,700,000 units in the previous year. Next. The overall volume of transaction made in Selangor as whole reached 295,000 in total with the majority of total volume of transaction made under residential subsector, which is followed by the agriculture and the commercial. Next.
For the competitive analysis, the area surrounding the purpose site is already an established residential area. Majority development of existing competitor in Somalia are mainly terrace houses. The table shows the list of competitors that are located within one kilometer radius from our subject site. First competitor is Taman Semenya Indah, then Taman Bukit Semenya, and Taman Semenya Mewah. All these competitors offer the similar types of property which are single story and double story terrace house. The build up are approximately ranged between 900 to 1,540 square feet and the price range of the project are quietly new with the range price of our purpose development which is within 300,000 to 600,000. Next. For the planning guideline requirement, our purpose site has ful fulfilled the requirements in the local plan, manual guideline, and planning standard states of Selangor policy of Rumah Selangor Co. Next. Our purpose site is zoned under residential according to Kajang Municipal Council plan. The table in the slide shows the competitors of the type of housing according to the size of development plan. This was obtained from the manual guideline and planning standard states of Selangor. Our development is 9 acres, so 30% of the total development should be the medium cost of housing, and the site is non malay reserve land. For the planning requirement, the zoning under, under is the planning requirement is under the zoning of residential. The plot ratio of 25 to 60 unit per acre, which under rumah terancang berdensiti sederhana and a minimum requirement for open spaces is 10% of total development. Next. For the planning guideline requirement for residential property, which is obtained from the town and country planning department, for medium cost housing, lot minimum for single story and Two to three story is 5.5 meter by 98.1 with the main room of the minimum room of three and the maximum number of story is three. The service road is minimum 15.2 meters, the back alley 4.6 meters, fire break is 66.1 meter and the total open space is minimum 10% of total development. Next. For the planning guideline requirement for the commercial property, which is obtained from the town and country planning department. The minimum requirement for a 160 unit house is only one unit of shop house. With the minimum lot size of 6.1 meter by 18.2 meters, the shop shall not exceed five level. Next. For planning guideline and requirement for Rumah Selangor Co, the purpose site is under Zone 1 according to Dasar Perumahan Mampu Milik Negeri Selangor. As our site is under Zone 1 and the area is 9 acres, our site are required to provide 20% of Rumah Selangor Co, 10% of Type A and 10% of Type C with a maximum density of 120 units per acre. And we have only 40 units per acre for our purpose development. For the next slide, I will hand over this presentation to Melissa. Thank you, with that. Now we'll I will continue with this presentation. Next. So here is our development logo. Our development name is called Floral Inda. And the slogan for this development is, we are flying into a new zone. In which we introduce clients the concept of comfortability in a new development with their families surrounded by nature. Next. The main development concept here is small secret garden for the community. Highlighting the word garden, it associates with the concept of green environment for people to enjoy, and therefore it leads us to focus more on environmental sustainability. Home buyers' main concern is safety and security. Therefore, we focus on tax solution to relieve their worries by having each house uh, installed with a built-in system that residents can control using a mobile app a mobile app called Jaga app and the special features included in the app are visitors management system in app intercom panic button and barrier gate control through this we will be able to indirectly promote and cultivate a smart culture in the community 
So in this diagram here, it shows the Floral India Development Plan. Overall, the development has 147 units in total, inclusive of both residential and commercial units. We have around 136 residential units with 30% allocated for Rumah Selangorku, while the remaining 11 units are all commercial units. So the proposed residential development that we decided to go for are terrace housing, which is the most common in the area. We have two types of terrace house here. First of all, is double story terrace, namely the Sakura residence and the Flora residence, and the single story terrace, which is called the Blossom residence. Next. We also have a low-cost apartment called Azalea Residence, which is the Rumah Selangorku. For the proposed commercial development, we decided on a double-story shop lot called Delicacy Shop Lot. Next. The pictures here shows the internal view of each residence. Next. These are the floor plans for each residence. Next. And this is the floor plan for the Rumah Selangorku unit, uh, which we can see here there is type A and type C. Next. As for this pictures here, it shows the internal view and the floor plan of the commercial units. Next. For the facilities provided, we provide a green area, which is called the Floral Secret Garden. It embraces the development concept of Floral Inda, which is small secret garden for community, which allows residents to effectively enjoy fully the green area and to interact with other residents. We also, we also provide gazebos, bicycle lanes, and jogging tracks for residents to enjoy. and this green area promotes a child-friendly urban landscapes and is planted with lush trees and flower bush which displays more greenery. Now I will pass on this presentation to Sokling. Thank you, Melissa. Now I would like to continue with space allocation. As you can see, the planning requirement for the open space is minimum 10% of the land area, which is 0 0.998 acres. But our final layout plan allocation is only about 8%, which only 0 0.818 acres. So you may think why there is yes for the adherence to planning guidelines. Okay, let me explain in the Q&A section. Next is the uh, infrastructure and utilities, which the requirement is 30% and our final layout plan allocation is about 53%. So it has fulfilled the requirement. Therefore, the total of open space and infrastructure and utilities is 61.3%, which are 6.119 acres. So the net buildable area is 3.863 acres, which is about 38%. Okay. Now I will continue with space allocation for residential and commercial. There are four types of residential, which are Sakura residence, with the final layout plate allocation is 1.123 acres, Flora residence is 0 0.45 acres, Rosen residence is 1.575 acres, and Azari residence is 0 0.4 acres. For commercial, the final layout plate allocation for delicacy shop lot is 0 0.315 acres, so the total is 3.863 acres. Therefore, the residential development is 35.54%, commercial development is 3.16%, infrastructure and utilities is 53.11%, and open space is 8.19%. Then the total is 100%. Okay. Then the space and location for residential are fulfilled the requirement of the planning guidelines. Well, the space allocation of commercial development also fulfill the requirement of the planning guidelines. Okay. Next, I will continue with feasibility study. First, I will explain cash flow analysis. The cash inflow projection is based on the project timeline and cash inflow projection. The cash inflow is mainly generated from the sales of the properties and progressive payment received 
uh, which according to Schedule G of Housing Development Act. Based on the market analysis, they will not increase the selling price of residential houses and shop lots for every year. Red of uh, rate of selling of the proposed development component is according to the project timeline that we estimated, which first two years will finish all the construction work and the properties will be disposed in year three and four. In this project, the allocation for Bumi Putra is 30% with 7% discount given as it was stated at this condition in this feasibility study. As most of the buyers will not pay full amount, Therefore, the initial stage, the developer will receive the deposit and follow by progressive payment according to stages of construction. Okay. For the development cost, the land expenses are the cost paid for site purchase. It consists of expenditures related to the site, such as legal fees and stamp duty. The building plan fees and planning approval fees obtained from Madris Bandaran Kajang. The statutory contribution and compliance costs includes application fee for land premium, survey fee, application fee for the title, Tanaga National Berhad, Jabatan Ai Selangor, Inda Water Consortium and Infrastructure Service Fund, which was all inquired from the particular department to obtain all the fees. Land premium charge for conversion the express condition from residential to commercial, which the rate is 150 per acre. Contingency allowance fee is 5% of the total building cost with infrastructure cost. Then, in summary, when gross development value minus gross development cost will get profit before tax. Then the profit before tax minus initial capital of investor will get net profit. Then when net profit divided by initial capital of investor, we'll get ROI and so on. The bridging loan for building construction, which is 7,337,252, while the term loan for land cost is 3,250,000. The total capital will be at 40,160,236. The equity and the debt will be calculated into WACC. All the cash inflow will deduct with the cash outflow to obtain the net cash flow. Net cash flow will be present value in order to arrive to net present value of net cash flow to calculate the IRR. Then the net cash flow is accumulated from year one to year four in order to calculate the break even point for this project. Okay. Then I will continue with rescue method. Rescue method consists of gross development value and gross development cost. The gross development value is established through the total product sale in this project, which consists of residential houses such as single story terrace houses and double story terrace, house, terrace houses and shop lots with a total of 147 units. The Bumi allocation is 30% with a Bumi Putra discount of 7%. In order to obtain the gross development value, the Bumi allocation and Bumi Putra discount must be deducted from the gross development value which the total value of 147 units. Well, the gross development value, uh, sorry, well, the gross development cost consists of construction cost of the building as well as the total of other development costs. The building construction cost consists of the construction cost of the product, the residence building and commercial building. The other development construction cost consists of the cost from pre-construction stage, construction stage, and post-construction stage. The developer's profit in this project is 20% of the gross development value. By adding all the building construction, by adding all the building construction costs, other development costs, and also the developer's profit to establish the total development cost. The residual value is discounted at the rate of 7.98% with two years in order to establish the capital value of the proposed site, which is Six million five hundred thousand. That's all from me. Now I will pass to Melissa to continue the slide. Thank you, Kathleen. So here is the profile for our target market. First of all, they must be a Malaysian citizens, age between thirty to fifty, mixed race buyers, and monthly household income of four thousand and above. Next. We will go through the SWOT analysis. First of all, is strength. So we have is strategic location. 
with Semenyi somewhat located and involved in the development of the Greater Kuala Lumpur, Floral India can easily attract growing families and single working adults to, bri to buy property. Good accessibility. It is connected to highways like Kajang Silk Highway and Kajang Seremban Highway, as well as the road such as Jalan Semenyi Kajang and Jalan Bangi Lama. As for the weakness, uh, we have traffic congestion. Since it is surrounded by commercial and residential area, the number of vehicles on the road increases rapidly, especially during weekends and peak hours. <coughs> For opportunities, uh, we have high returns on investments. Since it is near to Bandar Semenyi, it brings good opportunities to residents as well as other neighboring residents and it can generate high returns by conducting businesses or renting units. Other than that, we have high occupancy. With a strategic location, it will influence the marketability of the proposed development. We found that the take-up rate for the residential properties and occupancy rate for the commercial properties is high in that area, which shows a high demand for residential in this area. As for threats, we have competitor in the neighborhood areas. Since there are a lot of residential properties surrounded floral area, eh, floral in the area, with similar projects like ours, which is terrace housing. Next we have is the economic downturn. Due to the current economic downturn in Malaysia, the purchasing power of Malaysians has decreased quite a lot along with the housing affordability. Next. So looking at this diagram here, we have the four P's, which is price, promotion, uh, place, and product. So for price, since we target middle incomers with income between 5,000 to 10,000 ringgit, the price range for a single unit of residential or commercial development are quite reasonable, which we can see here. As for promotion, the Bumi Putra discount, we allocate 7% discount to those with Bumi Putra status in order to secure sales of the allocated units, which is 30% according to MPKJ. Other than that, we have free legal fees, which means that they will only need to pay legal fees, uh, legal disbursement for the sale and purchase agreement, stamp duty on, on the transfer, as well as the legal fee and stamp duty on the charge. Lastly is the referral fee. 500 ringgit referral fee can be given to the purchasers who introduces third party to purchase a unit in the project and it will be given in term of cash rebate. As for place, our proposed development is approximately 1.8 kilometers away from Econ Safe Hypermarket and 1.5 kilometers away from Semenyi Central Station. For product, Floral Inda is a newly proposed development which comprises of quality single story terrace double-storey terrace, and commercial shop units. Therefore, the main profit-producing products in Florinda are residential units, which is the Blossom Residence, Sakura Residence, as well as the Flora Residence, the Rumas Langorpu, which is Azalea Residence, and the double-storey shop lot, which is the Delicacy shop lot. Next. So here, we conduct two types of marketing, which is digital marketing and traditional marketing. For digital marketing, we have social media marketing, which is one of the methods of media marketing to promote products and services by using social media. Examples of social medias are Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Other than that, we have search engine marketing, which is regarded as the most important types of digital marketing as it can increase the visibility of a website to users of a search engine. And lastly is the email marketing. Although it is considered as an old school marketing, it is still very easy and direct to approach and reach out to customers as every internet users has at least one email. For traditional marketing, we have flyers and brochures, which is the two main instruments we use to promote our project, signboards and 
recording, which is an effective way for us to communicate with passerby. And it includes the project's brief descriptions, artist impressions of the product and other relevant information in regards of our proposed development. And last but not least is newspaper. Next. That is all from us. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you uh, to group seven. Well done. Uh, before I open the Q&A to the class, I remember Nemo said I will explain this in the Q&A session. So what is the explanation? Okay, now I will explain. You see that, uh, okay, I show the calculation. Okay, this is we I get from the planning guidelines. The Talam inside say that the planning guidelines have mentioned that 30% of the total open space can be for utilities and infrastructure, which means that which means that 0 0.998 acres times 30% equals to 0 0.2994 acres. But um uh, so 0 0.2994 acres of the open space can be used for infrastructure and utilities. To know whether we fulfill the requirement or not, can use 0 0.998 minus 0 0.818 acres, which equals to 0 0.81. Uh, 0.18 acres. This means that only 0.18 acres for the of the open space are used for utilities and infrastructure, and do not exceed 0.2994 acres. Understand? Hmm. Good job. <laughs> so, bagi kawasan, okay, dia kena tersen. 30% has to be utility. Contoh, 30% over 100 of 3 acres is 0 0.9. Mm. So, 0 0.998 acres is? 0 0.998 acres is 10% for our land or land area. 10% of the land area is 0 0.998. Mm. Okay. Tapi, you, you propose 0 0.818 acres. Which yes. Which is not 10%. Mm. And it's okay because the tak lo tidak melebihi kada three percent ni ke? Ya A one tu eh. Thirty percent daripada jumlah kawasan kemudian utility zone rola yang dikira berbagai berbagai pengiraan tu. So maksudnya, in a way, you can have thirty three percent maximum of uh infra and utilities, right? Is that the argument? Mm. Kan? Yes. In a way, kan? Mm. Sebab so, dia kata boleh 30% ini boleh dia fikir sebagai sebagai daripada pengiraan. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Ini dari MPKJ punya. Uh, planning guidelines. Ah uh, no. Planning guidelines lah. Ah ya ya ya. Oh. Faimal adakah Faimal memahami? Ini <coughs> Faimal. Faimal. Yes. Uh, do you understand this? why it's not uh, 10% and still considered adhered to the planning guideline? Wait, ah, bagi kuasa perumahan, 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 perumahan. Can I use BM to explain? <laughs> yeah, boleh, boleh. Tak ada masalah. Okay, okay. 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 Sebenarnya saya punya tanah, kena ambil 10% untuk pagi open space. Okay. okay, so saya ambil 10%, saya 10% adalah 0.998 acres. Okay, Aha. lepas tu saya nak, saya saya, buni, saya nak bina infrastructure and utility, tapi saya tak cukup. So saya ambil open space punya 30%. Okay. Bukan open space, infra punya, right? Infra hmm? yang ada 30%. Bukan, 30% uh, dia jumlah kemudian utility, air tapungan dia ambil kira sebagai... Ya. Eh, tapi dia tak cakap infra pun, dia kata utility dengan zon pemampan, ya, jalur saya... hijau dan kolam takungan air. Yalah saya ada bina itu mah. Saya ada bina. Itu uh, apa? <laughs> saya, ada, saya ada bina water catchment area, ada kawasan tatahan air, saya ada bina, saya ada bina uh, apa lagi ya. Uh, TMB semua saya letak satu place saja. Okey kejap. So maksudnya Okay, kejap eh. Sebab dia kata 30%, 30% ah. dari jumlah kemudahan, eh, eh, mana hilang? Hilang. Sini, sini, sini. sini. Alah, dia dah kecil, tak nampak. Okay, okay, Kena, okay. apa, share screen. Okay, okay. Eh, share screen pula. Apa, uh, PowerPoint slide. Okay, okay. Oh, tengok ni lah, tengok ni. Nak tengok yang tadi tu. Yang layout plan tu. Ah. 
sebab dia kata 30% dari jumlah kawasan boleh dia ambil kira sebagai dia sebahagian of the 10%. Okay. Apa dia? Saya faham. Okay. Uh. Kejap. Sebelum you faham, I nak tengok ni dulu. <laughs> nak tengok ni uh, apa? Uh, slide show okay. ni ni. Okay. So you punya percentage of utilities yang kolam tadahan ni semua berapa? 53, above 53 <coughs> I think. Itu uh, infra. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, infra dengan kawasan utility lain. Infra tu masuk jalan. Kan? So kalau you lamkan your infra dengan utilities, dia uh, tak match dengan apa yang dah cakap dalam guideline. Guideline kata 30% of kolam tadahan dia dah listkan untuk you. Ini yeah. aja dia kata dia akan consider. Yeah, so okay. kalau you pecahkan your infra dengan your utilities berapa persen? Oh, I tak pernah it pecah lagi. Ha. Sebab dia specifically cakap utilities. Okay, Faima, you faham oh, apa? Oh, oh. Antara ni mau kira. Uh, apa yang <coughs> you faham from the guideline yang macam doktor cakap tu 30% uh, back balik ni mau yang slide after yang 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 tadi tu. Tak lain. Aha. Sekejap doktor. I pergi <laughs> tengok saya separate berapa. Saya ada buat boleh. Okay. <coughs> okay, lepas tu Faima, oh you nak baca dia ni eh? Ah, oh, okay, ni. Okay, I okay. faham. Macam doktor cakap lah tadi yang 10% tu uh, can be include only for the kemudian utility, zone penampan, jalur hijau uh, which is for utilities, not included for infrastructure. Ha. Okay. Uh, hmm. Tak nak? Hmm. Ha. Yes. Dia dah bagi tiga je. Satu, yeah, dua, aha. tiga, empat. Maksudnya kita boleh ambil 3% from the 10% tu eh, uh, Salah salah Maksudnya dia contoh let's say Kawasan yang ni mobile for utilities tu let's say berapa uh, 2.99 acre Then hmm. boleh ambil 3% from that acre tu je hmm? So kat sini kita tahu ada lebih kadar 3% hmm. Betul? Why? Maksudnya, dia, kan, dia katakan 10% uh, daripada pengiraan 10% for tanah lapang Uh-huh. Okay, tanah lapang and then uh, you cakap you punya kawasan untuk residential tak cukup untuk buat kan? Uh. Okay, you nak ambil daripada kawasan apa? Kawasan open space, ini, uh, open space tu. Uh, you nak ambil daripada open space? Ya lah, sebab sekarang saya boleh open space uh, tak okay, cukup lah. Okay, betul-betul. Uh, <laughs> open space tu, okay sekarang ni uh, you nak uh, open space tu tak cukup. So you nak cukupkan 10%. Mm. Uh, then daripada ten, uh, daripada utilities punya total mm. acres tu you boleh ambil uh, not more than 3 acres je. Kat sini kat sini dia tertakluk hanya tidak melebihi daripada 3 acres which mean let's say eh, macam you, you buat tadi utilities you 2.99 acre ni mm. just 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 for example lah 2.99 acre only 3% from this area je boleh dijadikan boleh include as a 10% for open space. Okay, faham. Not more than 3%. Okay. What yeah. I'm understanding is different lah. But the total for uh, total saya punya infrastructure dan utility uh, total saya punya utilities saya adalah ada 0.7213. <coughs> Macam mana? Sekali lagi, sekejap. Hmm. Saya ada... Eh. Ada pecahan tu dah? Sudah pecah. Kosong koi. Okey, sekejap lah. Kosong koi tujuh dua satu. Tujuh koi? 0.721 acres is for this kawasan per, tad, apa kawasan tadahan gitu apa zon penampan ni semua. Betul? Okay. Hmm. Tu berapa percentage of the whole development? Uh, cuy. Cuy cuy cuy. Seven about 7%. So, 7% of the whole development is the utility. So, sekarang dia kata 
30% dari jumlah kawasan tu you boleh ambil as part of the 10% tapi not more than 10%. So kalau 7% you can take 30% je of that 7%. So berapa? You ada 7% tu tapi boleh ambil 30% je. Oh. Ha. Tapi yang aja I buat ini orang ke cakap 10% dari tanah kosong. Eh, ah, dari open space. You boleh ambil 30%. 10% dari tanah kosong, you boleh ambil 30%. Right. Which is hmm. tak ada masalah. Tapi masalah ni sekarang, you campurkan infra dengan utilities. Sebab dalam guideline, dia spesifik. Dia tak cakap termasuk infrastruktur. And infrastruktur termasuk you punya jalan, you punya infra, punya Saya jalan boleh... lah. Mungkin. Gerak. Kan? Untuk uh, means uh. I boleh dapat 30% lah. So, hmm. saya punya Okay. Uh, 30% Saya boleh tap, uh, saya boleh ambil 0.216 0.216 Sekarang ni tak cukup berapa ekor tak jadi Saya tak cukup 0.18 je Ah, oh, so lebih lah kan? So you boleh ambil the whole 0.2 so it covers. Yes. So, yes. Okay. So I think that's the explanation lah kot. Rather than you use, apa, kumpulkan the infra and utility mm-hmm. because your guideline sini dah clearly states only the utility, the penampan, jalur, hijau ring. Mm. So it should be in that way lah kot when you explain it. So mm. it's, not, it's not wrong. Uh, cuma, and luckily for you, it covers lah kan? Kalau <laughs> kita tengok balik. Ah. Uh. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so everybody okay? Pak Mar okay? Mana Pak okay? Bilang? Okay eh? Okay. Uh, but Luna is here. Okay, Luna. Uh, are you okay? <laughs> if not, I can ask Luna. you then. <laughs> okay, uh, Nemo will explain in Mandarin now. Oh. Okay, Or okay. in English. Or any, because it was in Bahasa Cian Luna. Okay, so Luna will ask Nemo to explain to you again. Do you want her to explain in Mandarin or you want her to explain in English? Luna? Mm, I'm okay with both. Huh? Sorry? Uh, both okay. Both okay, okay. Nemo, both okay. Okay, so I, explain again about this guideline. Okay, I explain again with the with the English. Oh, then something Okay, zero point seven to one. Okay. Okay, I change already. In the planning guideline, mentioned that we can take thirty percent of uh from the open space, which the open space is ten percent of the land area. Okay, so when I take, I have zero point seven two one acres. So I times thirty percent, I get zero point two one six two. Then, which means that I can take uh thirty percent from the Open space is 0.2163. So to see whether I fulfill or not, I use 0.998 acres minus 0.818 acres. So I get 0.18. That means I only use the open space 0.18 acres only. So I did not exceed 0.2163. So I fulfill the requirement. Okay? Okay, I see. Okay, so so basically, uh, this is something interesting, right? Uh, we you know there is a guideline that you have to really look into, and there are ways to ban, you know, some guidelines. And this is one example of it. Okay, so this is a good example from this group for everybody else to know as well that you might encounter the one day. Okay, that you might encounter one day. So okay, now I'll open the Q and A to the class. So anyone has any questions for this group?
Eh, tak ada soalan. No one has uh, any. Uh, Kishin, do you have any question for this group? Uh, no. No? Lavinia, do you have any question for this group? Anggil nama ikang. Yeah. Tak, sorry. Itu husband I duk angkat tangan juga. Lavinia, do you have any question? No. No? Okay. Uh, orang orang ada soalan? Minyaw tak ada soalan? No. No? Wow. We very good lah. Explanation this group, right? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> ha, perform sangat. Aku tak tahu nak tanya apa di bawah dia. Okay. So, I think um, um, I think everything is okay. Cuma, um, let's look at your calculation. Uh, uh, I to see Excel or slide. Uh, slide, slide. The one that you presented is okay. Uh, because, um, remember, your development period is how long? Uh... Construction for construction, I uh, I use two years to finish okay. all the construction, and then Correct. the next two years I will dispose out the properties. Correct. Okay. So okay, I think I just want to explain this because it's rather confusing. Uh, when you mix the residual in terms of uh with the cash flow analysis, okay, when you put in like this, uh, when you calculate like from year to year, that's cash flow analysis, right? Where you use cash flow, then you calculate like this one. And then the residual method that you use for PV two years is for the land value, right? Mm. And you check up today, the land value, it was valued at 6.55 million. But uh, your cost in the land expenses included other things as well. That's why it's 6.7 million. Right? Because inside this calculation, it was 6.7 million, right? The land expenses. Tu tak? Hmm. Tu tengok. Ha, okay. yeah. So, so it's it's you buying the land for 6.5 million plus whatever expenses you have to pay. So, you include it as land expenses. The one that you explained just now. Correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, your delicacy ni, which is a shop lot, it's priced at 1 million, right? What's the square? Uh, what's the size? 20 times 60. Is there any shop lot uh, surrounding uh, the... Location, the site? Uh, jauh sikit. Uh, a far bit. So, a far bit is how many kilometers? Uh, about 1.5 to 2 kilometers. So, how much, uh, what was the purchase price? Oh, sorry, what was the sale price of that particular shop lot? Uh, almost same with us. 1 million? Yeah, yeah. It is uh, the area or the selling price a bit high. I don't know why. Uh, the, the housing also. Uh, beside our property is a detached house, semi D. Double story semi D. Okay. So it's also expensive? Yes. Very expensive. Oh, but this is in Semenyi, right? Which has nothing. Mm. But but around the surround surrounding the other got school. Uh, many school and then kindergarten and other facilities or other shopping mall, uh, shopping mall no lah, hypermarket or other. They take the shopping mall or the hypermarket. What was the price of the double, uh, the detached house? Double story, eh? Oh, detached house banglo, ke semi D? Semi D. Semi D. So how much was the semi D? Oh, don't know. <laughs> don't know? Kata you cakap mahal. Mahal. Tapi, Tapi saya tak ingat. Saya ingat saya sendiri punya je. Sendiri? <laughs> I mean, this is part of how you get the pricing to cut there. So what oh, is the price of the surrounding is it, house? I only use a uh, terrace house to compare the price. Oh, because you only have terrace house. Okay, how much is the terrace house? Terrace house, uh, compared to us, is almost the same. Because, uh, pagi, tapi pagi mereka sudah maha. Sebab, okay, because uh, their terrace house is a uh, very old one. Very old one, okay. Yeah. Uh, what is the current current price? Current price, uh, I'm using the current price. Ah, uh, what's the current price? A. Uh, it's about. Um, 
IU as well lah. Hmm. Okay. The current price uh. Shh. Shh. <laughs> My mom. Uh, I, I use four per unit for, for wow. intermediate. Uh, is it selling? Yes. Can you sell at this price? Yes. And okay. uh, uh, other uh, besides my properties got double story the rest. They sell about five hundred thousand for intermediate. Uh, Size sama? Uh, lebih kurang. 20 times 60. Oh, okay. So, tadi you said occupancy is okay. Like, hmm. it's not a ghost town lah, right? Hmm. Okay. What is the cost of your marketing? Uh, 3% of the GDP. So, how many million is it? Marketing, 1 million. One million for the spend of four hundred. One million four hundred and eighty nine for the marketing and promotion. Mm, for the span of how many years? The uh, whole year, whole project. One year, whole project, mm. which you rasa is going to be around four years, right? Mm. Tapi, One tapi, million, four years. But if I promote my property, I only use two years, mark because in year two I assume all the project I saw out. Oh, okay, okay. So I think you're on the optimistic side when your SWOT also says there's an economic downturn. Mm -hmm. Would you say that? Yes. Yeah, but this I, is quite optimistic. But I give some. This I already did not increase the selling price for every year already. Hmm. Mm. Oh, okay. Mm. All right. Okay, I don't think I have other questions. Anybody else wants to uh, ask anything? Liguan, tak ada soalan. Ah, takkan ini tak ada? Okay. Oh, <laughs> okay. So Liguan dah dapat jawapan. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, so I don't think I have anything else. Thank you to group seven. Well done. Uh, good presentation. A uh, good example for us also to learn about the uh, dis not discrepancies. Ever it's like uh, the guideline. Like if you look in detail, there has to be a way that you can you know pull in some percentage off from here and there, right? Okay, so thank you, group seven. All thank ladies. you. Thank hey. you. Thank you, everyone. No problem. Thank you. Okay, so group eight, are you guys ready? Oh, mantap. Itu, Afiq. Oh, lama tak dapat Nazri. Oh, Izzat pun dah terlupa dah muka macam <laughs> Oh, Oh, lah. Ini muka Abizuddin. Lama tak nampak Abizuddin. Oh, group ni empat orang je. Adiba Suhara, eh, Suhara pula dah. Suraya seorang je, girl. Uh -uh. Oh, menarik, menarik. Okay, so. um, Oh, menarik. Alright, so whenever you guys are ready, you can start, okay? Assalamualaikum and good morning to Dr. Subayya Sofia Asadat Bin Said. My name is Ahmad Nazri and with me today are Muhammad Izzat, Muhammad Afizuddin and Nul Adiba. We are from Bubble Bee Golden Sunian Berhad and we like to present our project in Cyber Jaya. We are appointed by Setia Humas Sunian Berhad to assist in the market value on a commercial land under title 111355 Mungkim Dengkir, District of Sepang and State of Selangor. The title number is GRN 334161. Lot number is 111355, Mungkin Dengkil, District Sepang, State Selangor, Senior is in Super Cuti and line size is 6.126 hectare. Build rent for land is around 43,000. Land use is building, express condition is commercial building. Decision in meters is tanah ini boleh dipindah milik, dipajak atau digadai setelah mendapat kebenaran pihak berkuasa negeri. 
Registered owner is Cyberview Senior Berhad. This is our site plan that obtained from UPEM. The PA number is PA222943. As you can see on the slide, NMU University is located west from our subject property. Sepang Municipal Council is northwest from subject property, while Likowi University and Mercy Putra located northeast from subject property. Also, our land has an excellent accessibility, which is our land is near to Plus LDP, Maju Expressway, Elik, SKBE, and only take 20 minutes from KL City Centre and KLIA. Next. According to local plan Sepang, our land is under commercial zone. This is view of our subject land. The physical state, <laughs> the physical state of the site are flat and undulating. For market analysis, in 2016, the Selangor recorded a population of 6.29 million people and increased to 6.53 million people. This showed the, the increasing trend throughout the year, which have the high possibilities of keeping this trend in the future. When the population increase, the demand of the retail and office in that area will increase since a high population area will attract more retailers and business owners to establish their business. Moreover, it will put the obligation to develop more retail and office space to fulfill the job demand. Next. Sepang recorded as the second highest median monthly gross household income. It shows that Sepang contains people that are high income earning, which indicate that the target buyer which are medium and high income are there. This showcases the potential demand for this project in the future. Next. The number the number of shop unit in Sepang decreased from 2018 to, to 2019 and increased back in 2020. One for office not increased from 2018 to 2019 but decreased in 2020. This may be due to the COVID-19 pandemic that start from early 2020. However, the trends are likely back to, to normal after the pandemic is over. In a nutshell, retail and office building receive a quite positive responses in the Sepang area as it is one of the rapid rapid. Um, the development areas in Selangor, the supply of retail and office building are still low and demand is still there. Next. The value of shop unit in Sepang keep, uh, keep decrease with a significant decrease in 2019 and secondly decrease in 2020. While for office lot, the value are increased in 2019 but, but the value dropped back in 2020 due to COVID-19. Since the pandemic situation was getting worse, which was starting to affect the demand of the office due to several restrictions imposed to control the virus spreading. Next. As you can see, this is the, our competitors in Cyberjaya, which is CBD Perdana 2, Colomet Cyberjaya and Radius Business Park are the competitors for our test shop lot. One cottage walk is the, our competitor for semi-detail shop. CBD Perdana 2, Perdana 2 is a freehold commercial development located about 1 km from the proposed subject property development. CBD Perdana 2 comes with 8 blocks and of 4 and 5 storey building, which comprises of a total of 2, 5, 6 units. The build up size of the unit measure approximately from 1,900 to 7,400 per square feet in size. The average price is 451 to 600 per square feet. While for Golamit Sabijaya, also we hold shop office located around 1 km from proposed subject property. Golamit Sabijaya developed by Golamit Berhad come with 3 block of 3 and 3.5 storey building which comprises a total of 39 units in phase 1. The main selling point of Golamit Sabijaya is the location of the property which is located in the heart of Cyberjaya, surrounded by big corporation like Shell HU, HSBC, IBM, DHL, Ericsson, and Fujitsu. The wage price is between 330 to 360 per square feet. While for various business park is a spacious and prominent business hub located on 
5.89 acres of freehold land along Jalan Teknokrat, neighboring CUC MS Medical College, Jalan Perkhidmatan Awam Malaysian Administrative Modernization and Management Planning Unit. It also minutes away from Sabijaya City Centre and the future MRT station. It is located about one kilometer from our proposed subject property. The selling point of this property is unique dual frontage design with 165 car park bay at value to tenant and business operator within the development. The average price is between 631 to 827 per square feet. Next. Cottage is a freehold landed project located about two kilometers from the proposed subject property. It consists of three units, bungalow, shop lot, and six semi-detached shop lot. The project was complete in 2009 and the selling point for this project is a good accessibility and unique concept of the pro property compared to the other commercial projects around the area, which is the bungalow and semi-detached shop lot design. The average price per unit is around 766 per win a take-up rate of 80% till this date. Next, Next I pass to Hafiz Uday. Uh Thanks, uh, Ahmad Lazri. Then uh, we proceed to the planning guideline. Our land is located under BPK 2.11. Land use is for commercial use. Permitted commercial plot ratio is 1.5, with plain area is 60%. Next. To build a semi detached shop, the minimum lot measurement is around 27 cm 39.2 meter. For service route, the minimum size is 20.1 meter. Next. For landscape area, it must be 5% from floor area, including the planting parameter. The minimum planting parameter must 3.1 meter around development area, including building setback. For parking space, one car park lot for every 46.4 square meter cross floor area plus 20% from the total car lot for customers. And also, we need to provide one car park lot for people with disabilities, 50% with rank accommodation. Next. For the terrace shop, the guideline for minimum lot measurement is around 6.1 meter times by 18.2 meter. For the size of service route that is that stated in the guideline for three to five story terrace shop, is 20.1 meter also, while the back alley requirement for three to five story terrace shop is 9.1 meter. The standard also stated that we must provide an OKU accommodation, which is provide facilities for disabled and special groups and comply with the universal design guidelines. Fire hydrant and fire extinguisher also need to provide at appropriate place subject to the fire and rescue department. Next. <coughs> Uh, we move to the land process development. The development process comprises of three stages, which are reconstruction stage, construction stage, and post-construction stage. In pre-construction stage, developer need a specific site to initiate a property development. So the land development begins with the identification of land with development potential. Next, the application of land acquisition will be carried out. The other things that developer need to do is like simultaneous submission of application for proposed development to the one-stop center OSC of local authority, application for developer license, and sales and advertising permit from National Housing Department, not notification to start development work and site clearance. Once the development approval is obtained, the construction stage can start. For this stage, it involves professional uh, like architect, civil engineer, quantity surveyor, and contractor. These professionals are hired to ensure the construction stage is carried out properly. They will ensure that the construction is carried out and building structure follow the approved building plan. The last, for post-construction stage, it involves final inspection. Developer is required to submit requests for clearance of site and commissioning report to OSC once the construction stage is complete. 
BOSC will issue notice for final inspection, which consists of two stages by different technical departments. Final inspection one is carried out by National Facilities Provider, NFP, and final inspection two involves Jabatan Bomber and Penyelamat, DOSH and IWK. Then, issuance of certificate of completion uh, and compliance by paying deposit of CCC and submit from G first, and the last one, uh, handover vacant position. Next. Next. Okay. Uh, SWOT analysis <coughs> will put the business in the best interest as it helps deepen the understanding of its surrounding and reduce the chance of failure. Even more, uh, when comparing with competitors in the surroundings areas, increase the chance of being more successful. For strengths, uh, our proposed site uh, have a good location, and uh, have a good uh, accessibility and plenty of green space. But for the weakness, uh, semi detail shop is only uh, for high income company. <coughs> As we know, uh, in the Cyberjaya, we have high demand in a commercial shop in uh, Cyberjaya. Green Concept is the theme of the development that can attract more buyers to our proposed development. For the threats, uh, the presence of commercial competitors such as uh, CBD Perdana 2. Next. Now we move to the uh, proposed development. This is uh, our proposed development logo. The proposed development logo redefined the peaceful while allowing for natural ventilation and views of the green space that we product provided for the development. Next. This is uh, our layout plan. So our development consists of two story semi liter shop uh, located, situated at the upper and the right side of our proposed land and the terrace shop situated in the middle of our proposed site along with the garden on the lake. <coughs> Next. This is uh, our concept for the two-story semi detail shop. Next. This is uh, our floor plan for the two-story semi detail shop. This is uh, uh, our concept for three-story terrace shop. And this is uh, the floor plan. Next. For commercial distribution, 29.838% uh, for two story semi detail shop with three units for corner lot and 21 units for intermediate lot. Then 9.33% uh, of four three story terrace shop was, uh, with six units uh, of corner lot and 23 units for intermediate lots. Next. Uh, this is our final layout uh, plan allocation for our proposed development. For our proposed development, there are 38.71% for commercial sites, 35.61% for infrastructure, and 25.68% for open space. Uh, that's all from me. I will pass this presentation to the next presenter. Okay, thank you, Afizuddin. Now I will explain on feasibility feasibility study part of the proposed development. For feasibility study, we adopted residual method and cash flow analysis. Okay, first I will elaborate on residual method. In residual method, we calculated the gross development value and gross development cost of the proposed development to arrive at a capital value. As you can see in the red box, the GDV is RM 200.5 million. Next. Followed by our GDC of RM 118.5 million. Then when we PV the difference between GDV and GDC for four years at 7%, we will get a capital value of RM 62.5 million. Okay, next. Moving on, let's have a look at the cash flow analysis. Cash inflow, which will be generated from the sales of the retail offices, is RM 
1.19 million. After that, the cash outflow of the proposed development is RM131.27 million. And with that, the total NPV is RM36.93 million. Okay, next let's look at the internal rate of return. IRR is a measure of rate of return on an investment. It's also another way of determining a project's profitability. The IRR of our proposed development is 27.56% and that means the project is viable. Okay, the next attribute is return on sales. ROS will determine how much profit that we can obtain for each one ringgit of sales. So the ROS is 22.36%. After that, the return on cost is 21.96%. And the BCR is 1.29. Since the BCR is more than one, it indicates that, propose, that the proposed development is doable. Okay, next. All right, now we have the weighted average cost of capital. WACC is the average interest rate that a firm has to pay to all of its security holders to finance its assets. Here we can see that the WACC for equity is 2% for breaching loan debt and infrastructure is 2.25%. For term loan debt, is 3.5%, so that's a total of 7.75% of WACC. Uh, as I have explained before, the IRR for the proposed development is 27.56%. Since it is higher than WACC, which is 7.75%, so again, our proposed development is viable. Okay. Next. All right, last but not least, the break-even point. A uh, break-even point is when the cost is equal to the sales revenue. So as you can see the graph, it depicted that the break-even point is at the third year of our development. Okay, that's all from me for feasibility study. I will pass the presentation to the next presenter. Uh, thank you, Adiba. Let, let's move on to the comparison method uh, as our cross-check method. Is that so, Yang Pintan? So, I think you're on mute. Yeah. Okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> mute, okay. Uh, okay, as, as you can see uh, in the comparable plan, all the comparable are within one kilometer from our subject property. And then, um, as for the adjustment, first, for the location, there will be no adjustment made because all the comparable are located uh, at the same area as our subject property, which is in Cyberjaya. For the tenure, there will be an adjustment of 10% for comparable to since comparable to is a leasehold 99 years with 88 years unexpired term. Next, for the, for the date of evaluation, there will be an adjustment of 5% for each one year difference. So there will be a 25% adjustment for comparable one, 20% for comparable two, and 10% for comparable three. Next, there will be no adjustment made for the current land use, category land use, and zoning because it's all the same as subject property. For the land area, the, uh, there will be an adjustment of 5% uh, for, for each 100,000 square feet difference. So there will be an adjustment of negative 15% uh, for comparable one and negative 5% for comparable three. At the end, the total adjustment for comparable one is 10% and for comparable two is 30% and for comparable three is 5%. Negative 5%. Uh, 
Um, as the result, the adjustment net value for comparable one is uh, 159 ringgit and 50 cents, and comparable two is 119 ringgit and 60 cents, and comparable three is 108 uh, 15 cents. So for the conclusion, the best comparable is comparable three with the least adjustment net, which is five uh, percent. So uh, hence the total market value based on the comparable method is. Uh, 71 million ringgit this year. So next, let's move on to the market strategy. So our market uh, positioning is terrace shop and semi detached shop that tend to target the stable income companies so situated in Cyberjaya that adore green lifestyles. And our target market is both Bumi Putra and non Bumi Putra, owner occupier company with stable income and company that adore a green environment lifestyles. Um, so for the marketing mix, product price and promotion are the four pieces of the thing. The four pieces collectively make up the essential mix of company need to market a product or service. So the purpose development is fall under the commercial area only. This development concept is scatter a comfortable retail space for residential to having a balanced lifestyles and surrounded by nature environment. There will be two types of shop lot, which is terrace, uh, two-story semi detached shop and three-story terrace shop lot. Uh, so, to meet this, uh, the, uh, this shop uh, is to meet the current demand for, uh, so sorry, sorry. Uh, they are, so the total is 24 unit for two-story shop, uh, semi detached shop and the dinner unit for the sorry, the distress shop lot. As for the price, the price of the unit will help to determine the demand and profitability of the property. Therefore, the proposed development has uh, to have a pricing strategy for each and one of the unit. This can be done by view each type through its quality and luxury level. So for our development, uh, the price is adjusted to be affordable for our target market, which is the middle and high, high class income. As for the place, this is referred to the distribution of the product. Key consideration including whether the company will sell product through a physical store front online or through both distribution channel. The proposed site of development will start point at marketing of the marketing strategy. Location is primarily the most important aspect in the marketing strategy and Cyberjaya, which located in Sepang, is considered to be the most established location in Sepang. Uh, not only that, Sepang, which is surrounded by other popular districts like Puchong and Sedang, and then the, uh, so our development uh, site is a very strategic location and uh, plus it's nearby uh, just the densely populated residential area. Uh, as a formation, the post fee, uh, is the integrate marketing communication campaign promote including various uh, activities such as advertising and selling uh, sale promotion. For our development, we include seven percent discount for Bumi Putra. So uh, that's all from us. Thank you. Okay, so thank you, Group Eight. Uh, well done. So I'll open the Q and A to the class to look. Uh, anyone has any question for this group? Mm. Anything that... Oh, apa? Afi. Okay, Afi. Uh, I have a question on market analysis part. Why is the income for household is in is included in market analysis while the your your target market is company? Um. Oh. I think because of most. I think because of mostly the higher income, household have a company in Malaysia, and this can reflect the company condition in Malaysia. Okay. Boleh terima kasih. Boleh boleh. Okay, boleh ha. So your logic is that the reason why you need to know monthly median household income in your market analysis is because Malaysians also have company and it's directly correlated to their household income. Yeah. Yes. 
Are you sure that's how it works? <laughs> yeah, like how many percentage of Malaysians have company? So it's, uh, what we, we mean is that uh, when there are high income, then if the if the owner of company is there, this means that his, his income is reflect the revenue of his company. Okay, let's let's do an example. Okay, say I live in Jepang. Uh, I have a company that sells uh, roti. Okay, and my income is say per month. Uh, okay, this eight thousand in Jepang. So, are you saying that because I earn eight thousand from the company that I have? It relates back to your market study that you need to do more shop lots. When I already have a company with a shop, and that gives me this eight thousand income. So, so why? How do you relate? Which I have right now me as an example. Okay, how do you relate that? I already have a company. I am making eight thousand in Japan. So why are you using my income? As a data for your market analysis for shop lots. Because we believe that business owner can expand their business. Yeah, you know, there, there are possibility for the expansion of their business. What if they don't want to expand? With eight thousand, it's not enough to expand. So you pakai income tau sekarang ni. This is monthly income. So when it comes to monthly income, usually it's this is how much you make. But when it comes to business owners, they have other incomes as well, which is not captured here, right? I have a company and it's public listed, so I could be like earning I don't know every hour ten million ringgit, but I don't see it here, right? Because it does not reflect my monthly income as what this data states. This data by where did you get this data? Um, Nepi. Nah, not big. Uh, from which uh, report? Department of Statistics. Okay, from Department of Statistics. Department of Statistics, how they get this is through the household survey. So household survey, they will go to houses, okay, and then they will get, okay, this is the income, which is a mix of occupations. I, I don't know how many percentage, but I tell you how many percentage of business owners in your medium income household data you can tunjuk. If you say, oh, this is like, 80% are like company owners. Then maybe we can accept lah kot. It makes sense. Okay, it makes sense now. Like 80%, so this sort of represents them. What if it's only 0.5% and this rest is like government servant, kerja swasta. So how do you make this reflect to your proposed development? Um, maybe this part is not enough to support our market analysis. Oh, but it has to be reason why you put it, okay? The reason why you let was because this you feel or oh, yeah. it represents the DNA. But do you understand now why it seems like it doesn't make sense? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, okay. So I had the same question like Afik juga because normally we use this for houses. Why do you we use this if we want to propose residential? Why do we take the household income? Uh, because the owner is <laughs> because the owner, uh, can reflect the owner uh, uh, ability to afford. Yes, betul. So that's the reason why we use income because incomes, uh, what how, how much you make, it relates back to the bank loans that you will take and then your uh, affordability, your capacity to pay, capability to pay, etc. But when it comes to commercial, if your target market, like I fixed it just now, if your target market is companies, you should be finding out uh, what companies are expanding, who, uh, what kind of sectors are thriving, right? What sector sekarang is in the GDP in the country? You did not present it, right? What is the, uh, the not agenda, what is the situation like? in terms of economy when it comes to your target market which is company right yes. does that make sense because your target you wrote your target just now was 
high income company high income company pula tu high income company <laughs> stable, ha? stable income company stable ha stable eh ha so so in your market analysis should be that you should be explaining this is the current market trend right now this is the sector that is thriving so we see oh government is pushing more these are the policies that says government is pushing more for services for the sector to operate so they're giving an incentive so when you do this oh ramai pula orang nak buka business dekat sepang ni kat sepang kan eh kat saya berjaya sepang saya berjaya ha dekat saya berjaya pula tu ha dekat saya berjaya so okay talking about cyber jaya what was like the main master plan for cyber jaya mm, mmc mmc right so yeah. the idea that i think tu mahade had was cyber jaya was supposed to be like the silicon valley yeah right okay so you tak cerita pun dalam you punya market analysis that is important also then you can tengok who are the buildings next to you Who is your surrounding? Tengok your surrounding punya plan. Surrounding. <coughs> oh, tersedak. <tu> <coughs> okay. <coughs> okay. You detect situ. So, you got wing, MMU. Oh, uh, pasal bila you cerita your location plan, you cerita pasal institutional. Bukan that target market that you wanted. Right? If your target market is high income and expanding punya companies, your surrounding should be that. Like, okay, we have, uh, apa ada kat situ? Shell kat sini. We have <coughs> Shaftesbury kat sini. So, apa lagi ada? This is TM kat sini. Uh, HP is here. So, that should be your surrounding rather than Lincoln Wing and Multimedia. Unless you nak buat uh, university lah, then it makes sense when you present it that way. Okay. So, hmm. so now you nampak kenapa persoalan tu keluar kan dari Afiq. Because okay, we understand this is what you want to do. Tapi it does not match dengan your proposed development tadi. Oh, ada oh? ada bunyi kling tapi ada tak tahu benda tu. Okay. <coughs> ada orang kat tangan ke? Okay, tak nampak. Okay. Ada. Ada? Siapa? Oh, siapa? Zuan yang kat tangan. Oh, Izuani. Ya, yeah, Izuani. Tertekan. Oh, you tertekan. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Your zoning. Kita tengok zoning plan bawah tu. Zoning plan. Tutupkan slide bawah nombor 12. Okay. Where are you dalam zoning plan ni? The, the tiny bullet one. Tiny bullet, which one? Wait. <coughs> Two. Okay, so you're like definitely next to University Multimedia. Ni bukan ada kedai ke next to it. They have like this rows of shops, right? Yeah. Didn't they have like Taco Bell in Cyberjaya now? Uh, Taco Bell is the like cottage walk. It's that, it's like a bit far. Okay, but it's uh, surrounding, right? So there's like I mean, Taco Bell has become like the attraction of people coming to Cyber Jaya because, oh, ada Taco Bell kat Malaysia, you know? So, those are the things that you should look into and that's what you should present it. Like, these are the people. You ada competitor analysis ke? Tadi you bagi dekat dalam, apa? Dekat dalam okay, tables okay. je kan? Uh, Tengok balik yang tu. So, you had the one in Cottage Bar. I ingat ada satu daripada MK. Uh, Glomac. Oh, tu cottage watch tu kat sana. Uh, Glomax Cyberjaya ni, um, apa? What uh, is it? Is it an office building? Uh, Terrace shop lot. Uh, what kind of tenants are at that shop lot? What kind of tenants? Mm. You cakap shop lot, dia tak kosong kan? Tak. Yep. Huh. Um, it, it's a mix lah. Macam ada FMB, ada healthcare macam tu. So, are they like notable brands? Because you nak target high income company ni. So, are they notable brands at Glomac ni? Hmm, tak ada as far as I know. So, dia ada macam kedai nasi ayam city macam tu. <laughs> Farmasi yeah. kuah macam tu. Banyak yang macam hipster-hipster macam tu lah. 
Okay. Uh, hipster, hipster. Okay. Radius <laughs> business park ni ada apa? <coughs> Radius tu dia baru lagi so tak banyak sangat tenants. But I think there's oh. one like university eh kat situ. I forgot wait, what university. University inside the Radius business park you mean? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, CPD Perdana 2 ni ada apa? Sama macam Glomat. Which is? Apa contoh kedai is, dia? Uh, banyak kedai makan. Ada padi? Oh. Ha? Huh? McDonald's kat CPD? Eh? Oh, husband nak jawabkan untuk you. Dia kata ada McDonald's. <laughs> CPD Perdana 2. CBD, dia kat, uh, McDonald's is at Prima Avenue. Salah. Adiba kata tu kat Prima Avenue. <laughs> tak boleh pakai betul. Okay. So CBD Perdana 2. Okay ada. CBD, CBD ada bank, ada okay. FMB and then dekat atas tu ada offices. Okay. Ada offices. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Dia dekat dengan Malakat Mall. Hmm. Hmm. Next to Malakat. Oh, tapi dia dekat area Shell semua lah juga kan? Sebab dia dekat dengan Depals. Tak, Shell jauh lagi. Shell is a bit ke depan. Oh, okay. Alright. So now you nampak tak competitor analysis ni? Uh, macam tak tahu apa competition dia. Sebab satu, Glomax Cyberjaya, you don't know what tenant they are kat situ. Macam biasa-biasa je, buat kata tadi bah. <laughs> Radius Business Park ada lah universiti. And then CBD Perdana 2 ada like a few other shops in the Glomac juga. So are these are really your competitors? Uh, the competitor is based on the design and type of use. <laughs> I suka Aizat dia main bantai dia jawab. <laughs> competitor in terms of apa? Design? <laughs> apa Aizat? kos yang dekat uh, yang apa business ni saja yang uh, mix development eh uh, mix commercial building what does mix yang commercial mean similar dia dengan our property mix commercial tu maksud dia apa dia tak sama dengan commercial ke eh mix mix retail and commercial Ah, inilah nak main jawab aja. Kita bolehlah bincang. Ah, benda mix commercial ni? Mix use of commercial mungkin? Mix use of commercial? Apa maksud mix like use of office, commercial? Office and retail. Office. Ah, mix development lah. Mix development. Retail dengan office. So your shop blocks pun akan ada office dengan retail. Okay. Hmm. Okay, okay. So that's the concept lah kan? Yeah, so hmm. yang ni saja yang konsep yang sama lah. So your competition is because they are the same. And then diorang, uh, what is the occupancy rate for all three? Around 80%. Okay. 80% for all? 80% Glomax? Uh, 80% radius, 80% CBD perdana 2? Around, around that. Around? Around? Around, around 80%. 70 to 80% lah for all com okay, so competitors. 70 to 80%. Yeah. Mm, is that considerably good? To have 70 to 80% of occupancy for shop lots? No. No? Okay. Good. Tak tahu. Good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> main jawab je tak apalah ni dah masih nak main jawab je Okay what do you guys think okay, the whole the rest of the class Is 70 to 80% considered good occupancy for shop lots? Eh microphone I buka lah My microphone is on So kalau you jawab semua orang boleh dengar Okay apparently husband I cakap yes So the rest of you guys do you think it's a good 70 to 80 yes. percent? Yes. 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 Yes.
So if 70-80%, that means it's going to do well for your development juga lah kot. Kan? Kenapa you punya development ada tasik lah? Tapi tak nampak ada tasik pun dekat you punya location plan ni. Man-made. So you're going to make a lake? It's not, it's not like a lake, lake like very fountain. Farid. Eh, Farid. <laughs> fountain. <laughs> Oh, okay. Because you guys saw it also, right? The illustration. I saw there was like a lake. So I thought, oh, that's nice. Ada kedai dekat lake, I guess. Um, dia macam wait, I... dekat tamarind. Like at the center, tamarind tu dia macam ada like air punya jalan macam tu. Oh, so your illustration is wrong lah kan? I mean, you had an illustration for the double story semi-detached or something like that. Cuma you tengok. Yeah, tak wrong. Tak wrong? Cuma tengok sikit gambar tu. I mean the concept bukan like exactly like tamarind. Tamarind is like a path of air kan. Right. But kita orang macam ada garden kat tengah tu and then ada like. Tak, bawah dia slide 35. Cuba tekan slide 35 tu. Ha. Nampak leg you? Tak. Jangan Nampak tengok lake. Tengok ini, ini yang <laughs> untuk shop je, bukan untuk lake. Yes, yes ni je. Ah, lain kali crop lah lake tu. So when <laughs> you give this illustration, <laughs> eh then colour dia jadi lain photoshop. Tutup dia jadi benda lain, buah pokok-pokok lagi. The reason, because when you give this kind of illustration, people will say, oh there's a lake. Then you cakap, oh there's going to be a man-made lake. Oh man-made lake, uh, so nak tengok lah pula kenapa nak buat Surely it's going to be costly. And why do you need a leg for shops? Kan. Okay, class, are there any more questions for this group? Hmm? Tak ada soalan? No. Oh, ni semua pun tak ada soalan. Liguan, do you have questions for this group? Tak ada. Tak ada. Okay, so satu illustration you ialah telah menipu kami. Because apparently there's no leg. What you want to do is like your layout plan. Tengok you sebalik your layout plan. Yang light side 64. Okay, so this is the double story. Then you nak buat, oh you do term it as lake. How big is your lake? Berapa besar lake ni? Uh, eh, mesti ada kiraan kan? You guys dah kakak lake? Ada, ada. Ah, berapa? What is the size of the lake? Adakah Izzat yang tengah kira? Izzat ke yang tengah kira? Ke Adipa? Tengah cari apa? Okay lah, tak tahu size what, how many percentage of the lake is as opposed to the size of the land. Berapa percentage? Mana legend you, tak ada legend dan layout plan ni, so kita tak tahu berapa percentage semua ni. Nah, dia lah. Ini tak garang lah. Tak garang eh? Okay. Jumpa tak Izzat? Eh, Izzat kan yang tengah cari? Sebab orang lain tak tahu. Macam Nazri, still raya kot. Tak tahu background dia. Ceria betul. <laughs> Aduh. Okay kejap, uh, sementara you cari tu, cuba you buka slide yang percentage tu. You have that slide, like berapa percentage is open space, which I don't remember which, uh, in this one. Oh okay, so open space is 25%. Hmm. Open space you is 25%. In front, you 35, I'm sure you 38. Uh, 
Besar je open space je. Okay. Hmm, What is the guideline? Apa dia punya planning guideline? What is the minimum percentage for open space? 5%. 5%? So minimum is 5% tapi you buat 25%. Kenapa ada increase of 20%? Because we are doing the green lifestyle. Huh? Apa dia? Apa lifestyle? Green lifestyle. Kenapa Hafiz dah tak tahan gelak ni? Eh? Nazri cakap apa? Apa lifestyle? Idea lifestyle je. Green lifestyle he said. Green lifestyle. But they're not going to live there Nazri. You can have a green lifestyle if it's a residential because they're going to be breathing in and out in their house especially time they're working from home. But this is a commercial property. Maybe because uh, right? bila customer nak pergi shopping ke apa, tenang lah. Banyak view space. <laughs> tak banyak pun jalan layout tu ni. Jalan layout you, we see more blues. Blues means it's your building, right? That's 38% of the commercial site. Infra you ni, ni pun 35% lah. What is uh, in your infra? What is include or oh, terus diam empat empat orang terus tutup mic. Macam jalan tu lah. <laughs> macam jalan macam tu lah. Kenapa jalan you sampai 35%? Almost the same size as your commercial buildings. Tengok kat luar cari jawapan ke dah sini? <laughs> cari ilham. Cari ilham? Aduh, ilham tu dah datang sebelum pizen. Saya pergi ke sini. Kan? Tengok balik, this side 39 tu. We are trying to make sense of the development. Okay? Yeah? The 29, 9%. 9% it's a three-story terrace. 29% is dia rasa ada salah pengiraan ke ke rasa betul dah ni tapi tak tahu kenapa kita increase eh kenapa increase kan jadi 25% ni tak jawapan je okey pergi uh, calculation let me look at the calculation balik feasibility study tu okey turun lagi okey tunggu stop 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 hmm Sekejap, dah nampak. 53 units. Price per unit you 4 juta. Oh, that's for all, right? Yeah. Satu is berapa sale price dia? Satu 4 juta. Hah? Satu is for 4 million, is it? Yeah, for semi detach. For semi detach, you are selling it for 4 million? Mm -hmm. Dekat area tu jual berapa million? Your Glomac, your Radius dengan your CBD Perdana 2. Sekat situ jual berapa? So kalau ikut cottage work tu, price mm -hmm. tu square feet adalah uh, 766. So kami punya adalah uh, 860. So make sense kan? Okay kejap. Stop. You punya competitor analysis ada berapa sekarang ni? Yang untuk semi detach satu je. Uh, Which is? Cottage walk. Cottage walk. Cottage walk. So cottage walk is selling berapa size dia and at what price? Price per square feet dia adalah 796. 796? 66. 766. Okay. So, and there's and they're selling 766 square feet of commercial for how much? Quotation 4.6 million. 4.6 million for 766 square feet. Yeah. Macam tak logik je. Sebab untuk cottage walk adalah 4,800. 4,800 square feet. Apakah kejadian sekarang ini? 
Hafiz tak nak tambah? Kita nak membantu group you. Ha, aku nanti. Tak ada. Korang ni sebelah ikan ke? Korang satu rumah eh. Ha? Ya ke? Oh bukan. Okay, okay. Macam pandang kiri kanan macam satu rumah je. Kan eh? Macam mana ni? 5,600 per 4.8 million. Okay. Masih tak ada jawapan je ni. Okay turun bawah lagi. Nak tengok bawah Bila lagi. Apa dia? Dr. Zah. Ya. Yeah. Sebenarnya. <laughs> Sebenarnya. Masa kita orang buat cash flow. Macam kita orang buat uh, calculation ni kan. Mm -hmm. Kalau if you follow the comparison punya harga kan. Kan we, uh -huh. we use comparison method and then kita kita minta harga tu kan. So mm. bila kira semua dia punya IRR is negative. So that's why kita orang increase. Okay. So kita orang increase the price untuk dapat the positive. <laughs> <laughs> oh ya yeah, jujur betul group ni. Okay okay. 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 Uh, okay. Apa dia? Apa is the key? Honesty. Honesty is the key, right. Uh, you can be honest if it doesn't involve capital, okay? When it's a lot of money at stake, <laughs> you have to do as as much as you can to make sure that it benefits with the money that you're pouring in, right? So, okay. Group B, macam jumpa I lah kot nanti. Uh, nanti I do separately with you guys lah. Boleh. Then we'll try to see what we can salvage. Okay? Alright. Dah jadi sejam lebih pula. <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay. Thank you, group eight. Nanti kita do a separate meeting lah. Okay? Alright. So, thank you. Uh, well done. Uh, boleh lah. Nanti kita discuss lah. Okay? Now, group nine. Are you guys ready? Oh, group Kayun. Hi, Kayun. So nice. Kayun lah. Eesh. Sorry, sorry. So husband night. Uh, oh, Luna. I haven't seen Luna in a while. Shirley. And Kui Ming. Okay. Four of you guys. Oh, so now the only, uh, the only, apa? Roses. Oh, for you. Okay, I don't know. Oh, I... <laughs> okay, so you guys can start present. Good afternoon, Dr. Herzog. We are from SDY Property Consultants in the Bahad. Now I would like to introduce my group members. Our group members consist of Chong Hui Min, Shirley Yo Pei Pei, Yo Kai Yun, and me, Li Wen Yue. Before we start the presentation, let's watch a video clip about our proposed development.
Shirley tengah present ke? Because it's on mute ke? Who's presenting? Oh, belum present lagi. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry. And this is the outline of our presentation today. Next. Moving on to the background of Saramban, the Grace in Bilan. The Saramban district is one of seven districts in the Grace in Bilan, Malaysia. It is the capital of the Grace in Bilan, and it is situated about 60 kilometers south of Kuala Lumpur. Next. Uh, and I'll I will present about the particular subtitle. The proposed plan is held uh, title number Goran 2728-30. It is recognized as Lot 12907 in Section 385. And it is in the Great Simbilan, Saramban District, Bandar Saramban, having an area of 6.125 hectares, which is equivalent to 15.1352 uh, acres. The category of land use is under agriculture. Tenure is terminating perpetuity, where the owner has to pay 230 ringgit Malaysia for annual rent. Last but not least, the registered owner of this land is Wami Enterprise in Yurem Bahad. Next. This is a set plan of our proposed site. Our proposal site is irregular in shape after our set inspection we found that it is flat in terrain and currently no building on the site. Next. Our proposed site is currently a vacant land and this is a general view of our proposed site. Next. There is a bus station nearby our proposed site, which is Daman Sri Loop bus station with a distance of 350 meters. Also, it is accessible to some highways. This is the surrounding plan starting from the northeast of our proposed site. The first one is SJKC Kelvin. The second one is SMK Bukimewa. The third one is restaurant Nasi Kuai Kuti Dua. And followed by Cake Dan Roti Inbi, Pro Dua Sil Sindurian Baha, Pasada Dialysis Center. And last is MU Clinical Campus Surampa. And that's all for me. Now I would like to invite Shirley to continue. Um, sorry, Shirley, I think you haven't opened your mic. Got problem. Yeah. I opened my mic already. <laughs> yeah, wait. Okay. Thank you, Wen Yuan. I would like to proceed with the market study. First and foremost, about the demographic, the population in Saramba increased steadily from 2017 to 2020. The population is achieved until 631,000 people in 2020. This crowd also tells us that there is still a huge demand for residential property in Saramba as the population keeps increasing. Next. The household income in the Great Samila up to 2019, we can see that there is 100,400 uh, household under B40 group, 108,300 household under M40 group, and 54,100 household in T20 group. Moving on to the property market analysis, this slide is about the residential property transaction in the Gali Milan. These two graphs shows the negative trend of volume and value of residential property transaction in from 2017 to 2020. For the commercial property transaction in the Gali Milan, the graph also shows the negative trend of volume and value of the commercial property transaction from 2017 to 2020. 
Then we will see the competitor analysis. There are three main competitor analysis for our proposed development, which are the first, Hidayo Aman, second one, Forest High, and the third one, Ilingan Bayou. Um, but Hidayo Aman uh, and Forest High is the residential development with double story terrace, while Ilingan Bayou is single story semi The tenure of, the, of this development in perpetuity, Hidayo Aman is estimated complete in 2021 and Forest High in 2020 uh, and Ilingan Bayo in 2023. From here, we can see that Hidayo Aman is more expensive compared to the Forest High and Ilingan Bayo. Now I would like to pass to Hui Ming to continue the presentation. Thank you, Shirley. So now I would like to present about the uh, proposed development. Next. The proposed development logo embody green leaf, which carry a meaning of nature and good fortune. We hope that this development could bring the resident a sense of cleanliness in line with the proposed development name, Eco Essence Resident, as staying in pollution-free homes surrounded by green plant. The word beyond green standard has the objective on emphasize the eco-friendly home in, in our proposed site. Next. The development concept focuses on scenic garden to improve mental and physical well-being of the resident by providing comfort greenery garden. Besides our proposed development, bring the concept of harmonious community. It offers the resident the benefit of spatial and peaceful life. Furthermore, our proposed development also provides gated and guarded community to provide, uh, to provide privacy for residents. Next. This is the layout plan for, for our proposed site. Our development site has an area of 6.125 hectares, many comprised of 208 units of residential component and 20 units of commercial scheme. Starting from residential, uh, residential development, the light brown color at the left side represents double story semi-detached house. Dark brown here represents double story terrace house. Orange color at the right side represents low cost apartment, consists of type a, B, and C, while blue color at the right side represents commercial shop office. In addition, green color in the middle represents open space where it can be accessible to all residents in our proposed development. The red small square represents a guard house and a big pink polygon represents a clubhouse. Next. Now I would like to show you the content on the brochure of our proposed development. There are 14 units of double-story semi-detached house named Avery as, Re Avery as resident. The built-up area per unit is 3,000 square feet, price 1,288,000. Next. Double-story terrace house in our proposed development is called Beliza resident. It consists of 40 units. The built-up area per unit is 1,760 square feet, price is 800. 88,000. Next. According to Dr. Rumahan Semilan, the developer have to prepare 50% of residential unit from the total housing unit. Hence, we provide 40 units of type A, 40 units of type B, and 48 units of type C of the low cost apartment named Duchess Resident. Each of them consists of four floors. The price range of low cost apartment are, are from 148,000 to 198,000 according to the different layout and the build-out area. Next. Elnora Square is double-story commercial shop office with total 20 units located in the proposed development. The build-out area is 2,540 square feet. The price is 988,000. Next. For facility, first and foremost, the green area in our proposed development is called Eco Garden. There are common facilities provided to encourage healthy lifestyle, such as children playground, badminton court, jogging and cycling, linear track, and so on. Beside the clubhouse, it is strictly for member use only, which, which is the resident from the proposed development. This is to ensure the exclusive privacy for our own resident. Basically, the clubhouse that equipped with recreational facility, both indoor and outdoor, such as gymnasium, swimming, swimming pool, sauna, and so on. Last, last but not least, guard house. Only resident with access card and sticker 
or authorized visitor are allowed to enter the security guard house to ensure the safety of the resident. Next. Now I would like to present about the short SWOT analysis for our proposed development for strength first. Our proposed site has a good concept. Our proposed development brings many good concepts, which is quite unique compared to other housing development. Second, strategy location. Eco Asset Residence is located at Seremban, which is a city and capital of Nangari Semilan. Hence, the proposed development can easily attract the buyer. For witness, first, congestion during peak hour. Due to the proposed site is surrounded by commercial and residential area, the number of vehicles that use the road increase rapidly, especially during peak hour. The most common congestion normally occur at Jalan Tok Ngu. Second, land price is quite high. Hence, the developer will have to bond higher development costs for land value. For opportunity, first, based on the research, there is a high take-up rate for residential property in the surrounding area, and this actually indicates the demand of the for the residential development in this area is high. Second, good accessibility. The proposed development has as direct access to major expressway, such as Seremba Partisan Highway, North South Expressway, and Lakas Highway. Hence, this is a great opportunity for the proposed development that will be able to attract many potential buyers. For threat, first, it is surrounded by competitor. There are many other competitors as well in the surrounding area as explained by Shirley just now. Second, economy downturn. Due to economy downturn in Malaysia, the purchasing power of Malaysia is decreasing along with the housing affordability, and this will impact the housing industry in a negative way, including our proposed development. Okay, so now I would like to pass to Shirley to continue with the presentation. Thank you, Hui Ming. Now I will continue with the marketing strategy. First, let us look at the target market. Our target market of the proposed development is both Malaysian and non-Malaysian citizens. And we thought that the proposed development can get buyers from a mix of different races, which is a good thing for humanity. We also target that our lender semi-detached house and terrace house can be bought by people from high and middle income group. But of course, we actually have low cost house in our proposed development for, for the low income group. Lastly, the proposed development is welcoming both the owner, occupier, and investor, and all over the world. Moving on to the marketing mix, marketing mix is a set of technical marketing tools that can establish a strong positioning for the proposed development in target market. There are four elements in marketing mix, including products, price, press, and promotion, which also known as four P's. Final, uh, firstly, about the product. We propose various types of properties such as semi-detached house, terrace house, and apartment with different built-out area for buyers to choose according to their preference. We also ensure that the properties are built by eco-friendly building materials, where we know that there are more and more people starting to realize the importance of green building concept. Secondly, about the price, our proposed development has provided free legal fee in order to attract more buyers. We also follow the Bumi Quota Regulation under Malaysia New Economy Policy to provide discount to the Bumi Putra buyers. Thirdly, about the press, we have set out a physical store, something like sales gallery, that enables to acquire some sales as potential buyer could have opportunity to see the housing unit and prototype of the proposed site. Moreover, due to the COVID and 19 pandemic, we also set out the virtual experiential gallery, which offer virtual 360 degree views from inside to outside of the property, leading the potential buyer to get a fee for, home, for a home without actually visiting the location. Fourthly, about the promotion, our proposed development is promoted, prom, promoted through media advertising, interactive website, and online advertising where we will discuss further in the next slide. So there are two types of marketing in digital way and traditional way. The digital marketing consists of social media marketing such as FB, Insta, and uh, search engine marketing such as Google iProperty, and also the last one, email marketing. The traditional marketing is carried out by the disputing the flyers 
brochure and promoting by using signboard holding and also newspaper. That's all for me. Now I would like to invite Kayung to continue. So thank you, Shirley. So I do now like to move on to the feasibility study that evaluate the financial aspect of the development and the viability of the development. So first of all, let us look at the valuation of the subject land before and after the proposed development. So since our proposed site has involved in changing of category of land use from agriculture to building, so these changes has, have actually raised the land value. And in our case, around 73%. So next slide. So in the Greece Milan, 10% of premium will be charged on the application approved for change of land use from agriculture to building residential. So in our case, next um, is around next uh, is around 785,400. Next. So now we move on to the cash flow analysis, which is the initial stage of the feasibility study. So in our case, the future cash flow and outflow are projected up to six years. So as you can see in the first row, GDV, it is mainly generated from the sales of, of the properties and the progressive payment received according to the Schedule G of the Housing Deve Development Act. So there's no cash flow in year one as it's planned to use for the preliminary works such as acquiring site, application of the development proposal, application of the developer license, and etc. And there's a cash flow starting from the year two as our project will start launching in the second year where the sell and uh, sell then sell then build concept is applied here. And the second row, the GDC, gross development cost, is a cash outflow including the land expenses, the building costs, the infrastructure costs, the contribution to the Saruman City Council, the contingencies, allowances, and etc. Then the GDV is deducted by the GDC to arrive at the profit before tax. So in order to get a net profit, we use the profit before tax, deduct the initial capital of the investor, which is also known by the equity of this proposed development. So moving on to the next part, uh, we can we actually now able to calculate for the return on development cost and it's calculated by using a formula net profit divided by the total development cost multiplied by 100%, which will arrive at 35.58%. So moving on to the next part. So in order to calculate the IRR, so we actually have to arrive first at the NPV of the net cash flow. So this is, this is first using all the cash flow of the GDV and the GDC just now, discounted by the WACC uh, by about 8.14%. And, and then the net present value is calculated by deducting the NPV of the total GDV to the total NPV of the total GDC. So in our case, arrived at 26.837 million. And now we are able to calculate for the benefit cost ratio. So it is calculated uh, by using the formula NPV of the total cash inflow divided by the NPV of the total cash outflow. So the benefit cost ratio for our first development is 1.34. And it and indicates that the project is viable as the benefit cost ratio for our, in our case is more than one. So um, moving on to the next part, which is the last second row. Hey, uh, go to the previous slide. So uh, as shown in the last second row, the net cash flow is actually accumulated from year one to year six in order for us, uh, for us to calculate the break-even point of this project. And then uh, lastly, the internet rate of return in our case um, for our proposed development is 35.60%, which is quite high. Um, next slide. So based on the graph at the left side, so it shows that the break-even is at the fourth years of the proposed development. So next slide. So now we are going to discuss the valuation of the site using the residual method. And the residual method consists of the GDV and GDC. So GDV is established to the total product sales in the proposed development. Um, so the Bumi Putra allocation is 30% with a discount of 7%. Then we can get the total development value uh, from the GDV deducted by the Bumi Putra discount. And then we sum up the building construction cost, the, the other de development cost, the developer profit, um, which is 20% uh, of the GDV. So we can arrive at the total development cost. After that, the residual land value is obtained by deducting the total GDC from the total GDV. So the, then the residual land value um, is then discounted at the rate of 8% with three years in order to establish the capital value of the proposed site. 
which is 18.6 million. So in conclusion, next slide. Our proposed development is based on the analysis and research done in order to ensure the land can achieve its highest and best use. That is physically possible, legally permissible, and financially feasible. And we believe that our proposed development is a sustainable development. So that's all from us. Thank you. Wow, thank you. Uh, uh, good presentation. Well done. So Eco Essence, um, is it part of the Eco World brand? Um, no. no, because no. Uh, we are from we are SDY property consultant, which are appointed by the Lily Development Company. So it's not ah. part of the Eco World, yeah. Interesting. The thing is, uh, with this Eco thing, Eco World sort of has coined all their developments as you know, like Eco Meadows, Eco Ardens, Eco apa kat sini tu, Eco Majestic. So when you have an Eco Essence. So people might think you are from Eco World, right? Because of that, which is fine. I mean, you know, uh, might as well, you know, piggyback on their success with the Eco brand. If it's not trademark, then why not, right? <laughs> eco assets. Anything can be done in Malaysia. So this was, this is a good presentation. I, I don't have much question. Uh, I do thank you because the first group, uh, which is Sam's group, right? Group one actually had a video and your group also has a video. So it was nice to have the opening of the presentation uh, group with the video. And the last one also closed it with a video as well. It's fine. So uh, any questions from the class? Uh, hello. Yeah. Can I look for your layout plan again? Uh, just now you mentioned that this direct access from the highway is it? Yes. Because just now during Kui Ming presentation, he said the SWOT analysis is direct access from highway. Uh, uh, so, it's accessible. It's accessible. It's a, have a good accessible. accessible. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So so the one at the middle one uh, the semi detached house uh, at the top one, the corner lot is that big uh? You mean a middle terrace house? The corner lot is that big? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Is that how big? much? How much the selling price? I was just wondering. Uh, you you guys plan for that? Um, for terrace house, actually, um, for terrace house, actually, in no, our the semi D, yeah. the semi D. This the semi D is is at the left side, not the middle part. The so, uh, the left side got three row, right? Ah, uh, yeah. The middle row, you see the top one, top. Top corner semi D, how is that big mother working that corner lot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually, uh, the price will be according to the different build out area. If the corner lot have the bigger build out area, so bigger layout area, so it will confirm have the higher price compared to others like the mid intermediate lot or the end lot. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I think I understand a Liguan new question. He's asking you why is there is um, extra land yeah, yeah, on the I, second row, right? But that is not inclusive of the semi D's house, or is it inclusive? Like that, that because from the layout plan, we can see it's quite a size, which is quite big. Yeah, so yeah. is it like part of the semi D's land? Yes. Is it? Yes, yes, yes. It is a part of semi D land because we have to ensure the Route is like a balanced route. It's not like eh, the route why, why suddenly become a very narrow one. Yeah, mm. so that's why uh, we will allocate a bigger area for the semi-detached house. So, but the price will be according to the the, the layout area. I see. Okay, so you, it's like you have this two, two, you have this two, what do you call that? Two yeah. land, right? Yeah, yeah two special mm. one, uh, the special, special corner ones. lot. I see, see. Oh, okay. Uh, okay,
ชนิดพี่ GPS ไล่โอเค sorry sorry guys sorry อ่าโอเคอ่าอะไรคุณบาลีอ่าพอดี harga okay I think you have explained that uh, I I think I want to applaud you guys uh, for explaining your calculation because it feels like a, a lecture because you have like this is how we calculate this is how we calculate which is nice Uh, kita boleh guna this as an example for a lecture on feasibility studies as well. <laughs> Any other questions from the class? Tell us all right. Okay. So I don't have much question for this um, group as well. I think you did well. You explained it um, nicely. Um, I understand the whole flow. I understand your market, why everything comes in place. So well done. So thank you for this group. All right. Well done, well done. Oh, I am also doing the thumbs up with the camera, but thumbs up, okay? So I think that's the end of it. So that's the end of VIE 1006. And um, as a whole, you guys did well. Don't worry, you know, if you have some, uh, not problems. I mean, some things that considerably is wrong, don't worry about it. This is the time for you to make sure whatever you understand is right. Okay, um, I do thank group eight for their honesty for saying that they got negative and then they added that's why <laughs> that figure is like that. I mean, this is like I said previously, a safe space for everybody to learn from each other and cut down on time that you have to you know experience this right. So now actually, all in all, we've learned about industrial right. We talked about industrial development. I think it was group eight one, and then we also learned about um. Like group Nemo, who had the guidelines, right? Um, yeah. And then we, yes, and then we also learn many other things as well from other types of development. So that's good. We also learn like uh, that. Remember, okay, always remember that the development period is two plus one. Okay, most is at three years. And I think more or less you guys has um, embodied and embraced, not embody lah. Like, oh, over oh, oh, time embody, embraced. Okay, what is needed to achieve the cost learning outcome for BIE three zero zero six, and due to that, due to that, uh, next for tomorrow's tutorial, I actually uh, has put on it's uploaded on Spectrum, but you guys can access it tomorrow. Uh, for the road to exam final series so i think we don't really need to do a discussion for property development like we did for ethics because i have great faith that you guys can answer all the questions in the exam so just do this um uh, tutorial series three tomorrow on spectrum i do need you to submit uh, and then you can also use that as a guide for your study week to prepare for the exam okay which is on when is the exam for vie pre-06 It's in July. It's in July, right? Yeah, last day, 7-7. 7-7, so 7-7 um, is the exam for BIA 3006, which I have uh, um, great faith also, and I believe everybody will pass. And yes, I think that's about it. So well done, everyone. Uh, clap, clap, clap for yourself. 